Hey guys, as many of you are aware, I'm hard at work putting together a new cartoon series that I'm getting all the prep work done for. But that project is going to be taking up most of my time for videos. So you're probably not going to see as much video game or Game Grumps related stuff on this channel for a while. But while I'm getting that project all figured out, I just wanted to do a video of me talking about my gaming experiences of 2013. There's not going to be a lot of drawings to go along with this video because that would take too long while I'm busy with other stuff. But I'm just going to go through a bunch of games that came out in 2013 and talk about my thoughts on them. Now I didn't play every single game that came out in 2013, so I'm sorry if I miss one that you want to hear me talk about. But I'm just going to go through some games and get my thoughts on them. Alright, here we go. I suppose we'll start off with Fire Emblem Awakening. I'm not really into RPGs or strategy games, and this is a strategy RPG, so I didn't think I would like it that much. But what do you know, it's actually really fun. I think it's because it's really streamlined, like the battles and the turns and stuff, they go by really fast. There isn't a whole lot of filler padding and stuff. The writing is good, the presentation is great, the characters, I like them. I don't know, it, it surprised me. I guess I'm a Fire Emblem fan now. Alright, next up let's take a look at Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. This is a good one. It expands on a lot of the ideas that the original game had, and it introduces some more interesting puzzles and gameplay elements. I will say though, I think I prefer the original, just because I think it has better atmosphere. Like, there aren't a whole lot of interesting ghosts in this game. Most of them are just blobs with two circles for eyes and another hole for a mouth. The first one had those two, but they also balanced it out with some more interesting ghosts that were more detailed. And it kind of lacks in this one. Also, the music isn't as good. The original had this really weird kind of music, like, there was some orchestrated stuff, but there was also this kind of strange, techno, eerie, I don't even know how to describe it. It was really unique and gave the game a kind of interesting identity. The music in this one is alright, but it's more like generic cartoony haunted house stuff. But no, this is still a great game, and a uh, multiplayer is actually surprisingly fun. Didn't expect that from a Luigi's Mansion game. Although, why can't we play as someone besides Luigi? Come on, bring Waluigi in. Guess we'll get the other 3DS stuff out of the way. Animal Crossing New Leaf. It's Animal Crossing. Not much else to say about it, it's... You go to a town, you do things. This time it gives you a little more stuff to do with the whole mayor aspect, like you, you can control the different aspects of the town. Certain structures and shops can get built by your command. I got really into Animal Crossing Wild World for a really long time, and then I kind of like fell out of it. And this one I got into for a little while, and I kind of fell out of it quicker, just because, I guess, I don't know. I guess Animal Crossing doesn't really grab my attention much anymore. But yeah, there are some fun little additions that make it better. I like the minigame island, that's fun with friends. It's Animal Crossing. Moving on. Alright, the last 3DS game I'm going to talk about is The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. Let me just preface by saying Skyward Sword was the last major Zelda game, and I did not like that game very much. It was creative, and I liked some aspects of it, the temples were pretty good, but it was just filled with way too much padding and filler, and it just drove me insane. Fee, oh my god, I hated her so much, she was such an annoying sidekick. So yeah, I was hoping that this one would be an improvement, and in some ways it is, some ways it isn't. The best thing about this game is the complete lack of filler and padding. Whereas the previous game held your hand constantly and shoved information down your throat, this one's just like, oh, here's the temples, go do them. And that's really nice. I am so glad that they finally let us just do our thing without being force-fed all this info that we know already. And it's really fun to play, it's really smooth, temples are fun. The only thing I'm kind of iffy on is its identity. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's not that interesting visually, and it doesn't have a whole lot of personality. Nothing really super interesting. Skyward Sword actually had some better architecture and level design that I think made it at least interesting to look at. This one is just like, oh, it's Link to the Past 3D, pretty bare bones. I think you could have done with a little more personality or maybe a crazier art style, I don't know. It's fun to play while it lasts, but I'm kind of wondering if people will just kind of forget about it in a while, because nothing about it really makes it stand out other than the fact that it's just a classic Zelda. But no, I mean, it's fun. It's got good level design, good puzzles. I like the painting aspect. It's really fun to go on the walls as a painting. Some clever puzzles with that. So yeah, good game. As you can probably tell, I'm mainly a Nintendo guy, so let's talk about something that's not Nintendo. Battle Block Theater. I haven't seen many people talk about this game too much since it was released. It's by the guys who made Castle Crashers, and so I was really looking forward to it. And... Eh, it was okay. The single player campaign was kind of less interesting than Castle Crashers was, just because it felt a lot more level designer-ish. By, th by that I mean, it seems like every single level was built with the same set of just blocks and squares and tiles and stuff. Whereas Castle Crashers, you were left wondering what was going to happen next. Oh, what's going to be in the next level? A giant robot? A big ogre? A pooping deer? I don't know, anything could happen. This game didn't really have that. It was just, it was all very cut and paste. Where the game really shines is the multiplayer. The multiplayer is a blast. Get some friends together, play this game in multiplayer modes, the battle modes, like the soccer ball mode, that is super fun. 
You'll just laugh your asses off playing this game. Bouncing on each other, throwing frisbees that explode. Oh, and also the narrator, voiced by Stamper. Man, he is hilarious. He's actually my favorite part of the game besides the multiplayer. He is a joy to listen to. Especially in the cutscenes. He's got some really funny writing and he just delivers it perfectly. Though I think it's kind of sad that people are still talking about Castle Crashers to this day, like it was a huge impact, and it seems like people have already forgotten about this game. So yeah, I hope the Behemoth's next game is a bigger success like Castle Crashers was. Alright, now let's move on to one that everyone seems to be going crazy over, giving it perfect scores all across the board, The Last of Us. I am absolutely baffled that this game keeps getting perfect scores and 10s out of 10s and super high praise. I just thought it was boring as hell. Okay, I'll give it this. The intro is good, and it had me on board. The rest of it, I just... Oh my god, I just just so bored. The gameplay wasn't fun, which I know it wasn't really trying to be, it was trying to be more like serious and gritty, which I can, I'm okay with, a game trying to be more serious than fun, but I just didn't like the story, I didn't think it was interesting. Just a post-apocalypse with a bunch of jerks. There's the, the girl that you have to help, Ellie. I didn't like her at all, I thought she was annoying. She was just really uninteresting to me, I didn't want to help her, I didn't want to help any of these people. And it's like, I know the game was kind of going for that kind of tone, like, oh, you don't want to be sympathetic towards these guys, these are bad people, and that's what the game is about. And yeah, that's cool, but that seems like it would work better as a movie, just because if it's like that as the main character, I don't really want to keep going through to play as them. And just, I'm perp and like I said, I'm perfectly okay with a game trying to be serious and not really fun, because that can give us some great stuff, like Silent Hill 2. That game is not fun at all, but it's a great game, it's a great experience with really interesting story and great atmosphere. And I'm not saying a game can't have jerks as the main characters and be good, I'm just saying I didn't like it here. I hear Spec Ops The Line has a kind of unsympathetic main character that works really well. I don't know, I haven't played it. I'm interested in it though. I'm just saying I don't like it the way they did it here. This game, I just... Not every game has to be fun, but to be good, a game has to make you want to keep playing. And that's the main thing with Last of Us for me. I did not want to keep playing. And I didn't. I stopped after a while and I just watched the rest on YouTube. And you know what? It was actually kind of better just watching it as a movie. It still wasn't great, but it was more enjoyable just not having to go through the tedious gameplay. So yeah, I'm sorry if I offended everyone and made you all unsubscribe from me right there, but sorry, that's just how I feel. Moving on to another game that got really high praise this year, Bioshock Infinite. Okay, that is how you do a good story. That is how you do a good female partner right. This game is fantastic. The art style is incredible, the story is engaging. You just want to see all these characters through to the end and help them out. It is such a good game. It is really what the first person shooter genre needed. I have not been this invested in a shooter in a very long time. It's hard for me to think of what I didn't like about this game. Maybe, okay, I think the shooting got a little bit too chaotic at times. Like, it just threw a million guys at you and it was hard to keep track of everything and just explosions everywhere and then, oh, I died. But no, it was still fun. And that's the thing it does so well. It's a fun game and a great story and they work together flawlessly. Because the story gives you motivation to get through the gameplay and the gameplay is fun enough that, so that you want to keep playing. I think Elizabeth is probably one of the best characters in any game ever. She's a great helper, she's never annoying, she's never just like a dead weight as a escort mission or something. No, it's she's just a brilliant character. Everything about this game is just fantastic. If you haven't played it, go play it. Okay, back to Nintendo for a second, Pikmin 3. This was actually my number one most anticipated game of the year. And for the most part, it didn't disappoint. It takes the basic gameplay from Pikmin 1 and Pikmin 2 and it polishes it much more. There's a lot more clever puzzles, and the game just feels better to play. There's a cool new lock-on system that's very helpful that doesn't make it too easy or too hard. The music is fantastic, it might be my favorite soundtrack out of the three. I'm not sure yet, one is pretty good too, but this one had some great songs. It had great boss fights, that was a huge improvement over one and two. The story was a little bit more expanded on, there's some more cutscenes and dialogue. It's all pretty enjoyable. The graphics are fantastic, very colorful, very, very pleasant to look at. And then there's the challenge mode, which is awesome. It's very addicting just to go back through the challenges, try them over and over again, see how good you can do with your friend or alone. And there's DLC, they're making more of it. I am so glad Nintendo got on the DLC bandwagon, because I would love to see more Pikmin missions come out regularly. If I had to criticize this game, I'd say that a lot of times it feels like the areas are kind of empty, like you'll go pretty long stretches of land without any enemies to fight. That and it ends kind of quickly. Like it kind of keeps building and building up and then the finale is pretty short. Story-wise, I mean, there's, there isn't a whole lot of explanation to the final thing you fight. I like the final level though, I thought it was really clever. It throws a little twist in the gameplay that I think was really clever. Apparently some people didn't like it, but I liked it. So yeah, fantastic game, a great way to finally put something on the Wii U after so long. And I'd say it's probably one of the best Nintendo games to come out in a very long time. Maybe since Donkey Kong Country Returns? 
I don't know, it's just, it's a great game. Oh, and while we're on the topic of Wii U, The Wonderful 101, I already talked about that in my Wonderful 101 review, which you can go watch. So I won't talk about it too much, all I will say is, it's got a great core gameplay mechanic. The levels are pretty varied, they all, a lot of times they throw in really bad gimmicks that kind of ruin the experience. But when it works, it's really fun, and I will say this again, best final boss ever. Like when it comes to over-the-top action, Platinum Games does not disappoint, and this final boss is amazing. I just cannot stop talking about how good this final boss is. I don't want to spoil it, but it's just, oh my god. If you have a Wii U, either get it or at least rent it and beat it just to see that final boss. All the other bosses are good too, but man, oh man. I'm actually kind of sad because I don't think any other final boss after that's going to impress me anymore. But like, like I said, if you want to see more about this game, you can go watch my review of it. Next up, we have Rogue Legacy. I like Castlevania. This very much looked like a Castlevania-inspired indie game, so I decided to give it a try. Man, it is really addicting. The gameplay is fun, the fighting feels really smooth and really satisfying. It's ridiculously hard, but it's really satisfying to finally overcome the challenges. Every time you die, the castle regenerates itself in a different shape, and so every time you play, it's gonna be a little different. And that makes exploring it that much more fun. And plus, you have different heroes you can use every time after you die that all have different attributes. A lot of them have funny little gimmicks, like they'll make the world black and white or make your screen turn upside down. Stuff like that is funny, and it gives the game a good sense of humor. So definitely check this game out if you're looking for a good old-fashioned challenge. Here's one that you might not be expecting anyone to talk about on a 2013 games list. Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. Now this is a remake of an old Sega Genesis game that I actually grew up with that I thought was really fun. And as a pre-order bonus, they gave you that game for free. So I'm like, alright, I'll just give this game a try. Even if the game is no good, at least I'll have the old one. But then when the game came out, it was actually really fun, and I think it's actually better than the old one. The gameplay is nothing special, it's just running and jumping, and occasional throwing things. But the levels themselves have a lot of charm. Like, very few things in this game are repeated. Whenever you find a secret by exploring something, it's special. Whenever I went off the main path of this game and found something different, I was just super excited. I had a big smile on my face. It always threw new things at you. It wasn't like a game that was just like, Oh, here, fight this boss. Okay, next level, fight this boss, but now there's two of them. Nah, none of that. Because I think more games need to do that. Instead of trying to be super long, just have a short game, but without repeating stuff. Because that way the game is much richer, doesn't feel as dragged out. So yeah, this one surprised me. It was really fun. Oh, and Grant Kirkhope does the music, so there's a plus. While we're on the topic of platformers, Puppeteer. I'm actually not far enough in this game to really judge it. I've beaten the first two worlds, I believe. I don't know, I lost track because I was busy with other stuff. From what I played, the gameplay is alright. It's just kind of standard running and jumping. I like the scissor mechanic, except a lot of times it's just kind of mash square and go where the game tells you to go. But maybe it gets more interesting later on, I don't know. I will say this though, the visuals are fantastic. It's got such a cool design that makes everything look handcrafted, and the lighting is really good. It's just a beautiful game to look at. If anything, I just want to keep going just to see what new things the game has to show me in terms of the art design, even if the gameplay isn't really grabbing me that much. But like I said, I'll have to play more of it to see if the gameplay gets any more interesting. Can't really judge it completely yet. Alright, keeping with the PS3, Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus. This game kicks ass. The only other games in this series I've played are Tools of Destruction and Size Matters, and I haven't beaten either of them, but they're fun. But this one, man, I don't really know what it does differently than those two, it just, it just really pulled me in. The story is kind of underdeveloped at points, but when it picks up, it really picks up. Like the beginning, it just throws you right into some really awesome action scenes. It's even got some good emotional moments. There's some really cool set pieces. Like I said, the beginning is really cool, you're on this big ship that's being attacked and you gotta escape. And as I kept playing, it just kept throwing cool new things at me. It's got some really good upgrades and weapons and stuff. It's got some cool power-ups too. There's a jetpack you get to use at certain points. It is so fun to use. You can just fly anywhere and shoot. It's such cool controls. I don't know if other games in the series do that, because like I said, I haven't played all of them, but I hope they do, just because I want to see more of that jetpack. The graphics are really nice, the characters are fun, even though it's sometimes, like I said, they seem a little bit underdeveloped. This actually wasn't a full-priced game, it's actually a slightly smaller budget, but I don't really get the impression of a budget game. It's very nice to look at, it's got very polished controls. I guess the only thing really low budget about it is that it's pretty short. Maybe they didn't really have the time or money to make the story more in-depth and longer. But you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with having a shorter game. Because I'd rather have a game that's short and leaves me wanting more than is too long and makes me just want to stop. Skyward Sword. But yes, this game is incredibly fun, the weapons are super fun to use, the battles are exciting, the optional stuff is fun, I love the optional arena battles, and overall, yeah, just a very solid game, lots of fun, pick it up. Next up, Rayman Legends. Everyone loved Rayman Origins, I loved it, it was a wonderfully polished game, it was super smooth, the art was great, finally brought Rayman back on his feet after disappearing for a while, you know, with the bunnies. And this one looked like it could have been even better. It's not. It's just, I don't, I don't know. I was really looking forward to this game, and it's 
it's fun, it works fine, it's just nothing really grabbed me that much. Well, at first I was super excited for this game, like when they first showed it, and then they delayed it, and usually when a game gets delayed, I just want the game even more, like it becomes a really agonizing wait. For some reason this one, I just kind of lost interest in it, and I ended up not getting it until Christmas. I beat the handful of main worlds besides the last unlockable one, and I don't know, it just didn't interest me that much. There's a lot of touchscreen levels where you have to use the Wii U's touchscreen to use uh, Murphy, the flying frog fly thing, to help out the characters instead of doing the platforming yourself. And in multiplayer, that's kind of fun, but in single player, it's just not fun at all. You just want to go back to doing the cool, challenging platforming. Platforming. And technically these levels are optional, but you need a certain amount of collectibles to get to more levels, and you need to get collectibles by playing the other levels, and you need to eventually do some of these at some point, and they're just not that fun. And on top of that, even after such a long delay, this game just feels kind of bare bones. Origins had more heart. That's what it really comes down to. This one, the visuals might be a little better, I guess? But I don't know, I liked the themes in Origins better. I liked the map, I liked the little nods to the old games, and yet still try to keep it new. This one, I don't know, it doesn't even really feel like a Rayman game. I think maybe maybe that's what it comes down to. It doesn't feel like a Rayman game. It's all medieval stuff, and there's a level that's like a spy movie, there's a level that's like a mariachi band, Day of the Dead stuff. It's like, I don't even know what Rayman's trying to be anymore. Origins at least kind of kept with the first game's feeling cartoony, but it still kind of had an identity. This one just has no identity. And that's kind of why I want to see a new 3D Rayman game. Personally, I think Rayman 2 and Rayman 3 are better than the 2D games. I think they're more interesting, they have more charm, they're definitely more unique. And I just want to see something like that again. Rayman 3. Let's make a Rayman 3 2. Get the voice acting back, get the story back, you get the really cool art design and really nice music. This game has good music though, especially the music levels, they have some good tunes. The Mariachi World has a music level that's got a really, really funny remix of a popular song. So yeah, this game is polished and all, but it's just not that interesting. Everything about it makes it seem like it should be interesting, especially to me since I like cartoons so much and it's really cartoony, but it just kind of lost me. Make a new 3D Rayman, please. Alright, just a couple more games. Sonic Lost World. As some of you may know, I am a Sonic fan. I grew up with the series. I follow it to this day. It's a really big part of my childhood, and I'm going to probably keep following it. And this game looked like it was going to be fun. I liked Sonic Colors. That was I felt that was a good return to form. It wasn't amazing, but it at least got the series back on track. Generations I thought was really fun. I thought it was better than Colors. It's actually one of my new favorite Sonic games. Sonic Unleashed even, before that, was pretty fun for the most part. I didn't like the Werehog levels, but the speed levels were fun, and the story was actually pretty enjoyable. It had a good atmosphere. It was fun without being too silly. It had its good, serious, emotional moments, but it didn't get too dark. It, it kept the series where it needs to be, just being fun. The next couple games in the series are a lot sillier, which I don't like as much, because I think Unleashed did a good job of keeping a balance between serious and funny. And then we have Sonic Lost World. So yeah, gotta say, this game really disappointed me. Sonic Generations made it seem like the series was really getting good again, and this one just, it had some cool ideas, it took one step forward and about 23 steps back. The level design, oh my god, it's so frustrating sometimes. It just, they do not want Sonic to feel flowing in this game. He just has to constantly stop and reposition himself really precisely to try and get where he needs to go. And a lot of times the death just seems so unfair. And when it's not frustrating, a lot of times it's just boring. There's some auto-scrolling levels, there's really simple 2D levels. There's a stealth section in one part, sort of. You have to hide behind some stuff while a, a big robot is looking at you with lights. It's just, why did you put that there? Why do games feel the need to put stealth sections when they're not a stealth game? I really hate that. I hate that in Wind Waker. I hate that. Ugh, God. Getting sidetracked. This game does have its fun moments. There's a couple levels that make good use of the new controls. They try to give you a lot of branching paths that you can take with like the parkour system and stuff. The parkour, I think, is a good idea and I'd like to see them try it again, maybe, but it feels really clunky here. Like whenever you touch a wall, you don't just flow back up the wall. You have to like stop for a second to build your speed again. And there really aren't a lot of sections where the parkour is put to good use. It just feels really stilted and takes away from the fun speediness. I'm glad they brought back the spin dash though, that's fun. You know, I mean, whenever the level design allows you to do it. There's a bunch of levels in this game, there's like two where I think the spin dash was fun to use. But yeah, I think that's the main problem. There's some good ideas here, but the level design does not make good use of it. There's only like four levels out of the whole thing that I really like. The soundtrack, also actually kind of disappointing. Sonic games usually have awesome soundtracks, I think this one was kind of boring for the most part. There's a few great tracks, but a lot of it is just really generic. Like the beach level, oh my god, it was so... Just typical beach level music. Like, where's the rockin' guitars? What happened to the guitars? Sonic is supposed to be cool, man. And that stealth level I was talking about, it sounds like something out of Professor Layton. It's like a accordion, little slow French tune. That might fit in a different game, but come on, I want something more upbeat and exciting for Sonic. The story? Oh boy, I did not like this story. 
A lot of people actually said it was an improvement over previous games. I would disagree. I thought the writing was horrible. Sonic has a few good lines. There are a few good jokes in there from time to time, but man, most of the time I was just cringing. These new characters, the Deadly Six, they're like the most stereotypical cartoon characters you can think of. Like the yellow guy, the fat one. Guess what he does? He eats food a lot and he's dumb. Uh, the girl. What do you think she's like? She's a girl. She likes fashion. It's just really bare-boned stuff. Like, I don't think they've gotten better. I actually think the jokes have gotten worse since Colors. Sonic Colors was at least tolerable, I think. I mean, it had its groaners, but for the most part, it was at least sort of enjoyable just in, in its simplicity. This one, whew, man, I just did not like it. I thought it was really bad. So, yeah, not a big fan of Sonic Lost World. I hope the next game gets Sonic back on track. I don't know, I have no idea what to expect for the next one. We'll see. Okay, next up, another platformer, Super Mario 3D World. Ah, that's much better. Mario has not been very creative for a pretty long time. The last really new idea he had was Super Mario Galaxy. And I liked Galaxy 2, but I can admit that it wasn't super creative. It was just, it was fun to me. I really liked that game. I actually think I like it a little better than the first Galaxy. But yeah, the series needed to have more creativity. The new Super Mario Brothers games are all really, really bland. Even 3D Land I thought was pretty bland. It didn't, it didn't really have any good ideas. It was fun. It was polished. It just didn't really bring anything new. This one, it's not the most creative Mario has been, but it is a lot of fun. It's probably the most polished 3D Mario I've seen. The controls are just perfect. The visuals are amazing. The music is amazing. The multiplayer is fun. It's just a beautiful, fun game. There's a ton of hidden secrets you can find. And while I said it's it's not like the most creative game, there's it's still a pretty tropey at times. There's like the desert level, the water level, the beach, whatever. But it's it's it at least tries to be a little more interesting with them. It does some new things with them. Bowser, I think, is really cool in this game. He's got a really cool car. He's got a really cool new theme song. I love it. The cat suit is probably my favorite power-up in the entire series next to Super Mario World's cape feather. It's just so fun to use. It opens up a lot of new areas for exploration. It's fun to hit things with your paws. The dive move is really cool. It's just such a fun power-up to use. The game is just, it, it puts fun first. It's not trying to be overly epic like Galaxy was at times, and I kind of want to see another epic Mario game like that, but this one, it's just fun comes first, and it does that fantastically. All right, I saved this one for last because it's my game of the year. You can probably guess it if you've seen a couple of my other videos. My game of the year 2013 is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. This game is just so crazy, so fun. The action is ridiculous. The music is kick-ass. The sword fighting is so, like, ah, God, I don't even know how to describe it. It's so satisfying to do. The parry system is fun. The extra unlockable weapons are fun. The VR missions are crazy. The boss fights are insane. The last two boss fights are friggin' ridiculous and crazy. I just love it so much. It's not a perfect game, though. The story is, um, how do I put this? Stupid, inconsistent, and it's like, it's like, I'm okay with the story being stupid if it's like self-aware, and this game is self-aware at times, and that other times it takes itself too seriously and it loses itself, and I don't know what they were going for. Like, there's one part where it's trying to make you feel bad for the people you're killing, like, you can hear their thoughts, and it's, like, all depressing stuff. And then there's a part where you see a bunch of brains with googly eyes looking at you and shaking around and stuff, and they're all cartoony. And then there's a part where a guy curls you up like a soccer ball and kicks you, and you hear a crowd going wild. And it's like, I feel like it would have been a lot more enjoyable if they just kept to that stuff, the silly stuff, because that's more fun. When it tries to be serious, it fails. When it tries to be stupid, then it's fun. And at times I feel like the parry system is a little too forgiving. Like, you can do the blocking move, like, two seconds ahead of when the guy attacks, and you'll just be ready for it, and there's no way he'll hit you. So I think if they gave you a little less leeway on how much you can block, then maybe that would be a little bit more interesting. But no, for the most part, it's super fun. The sword fighting is awesome. One of my favorite gaming soundtracks in a very long time. Giant robots, ninjas, crazy senators, what more could you want? Alright, I believe that about wraps it up. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed me ramble about crap. Feel free to write in the comments about your thoughts on the games of 2013. What were your favorites? What were your least favorites? Am I a piece of crap for not liking The Last of Us? I don't know. Go ahead and say that. I don't care. So with that, everyone, I wish you a good 2014, and I will hopefully have some awesome new cartoons to show you guys. I'm having a lot of fun getting prepared to do this new cartoon series I'm working on. I'm really looking forward to it, and I think you guys will like it. I'm really passionate about it, so I can't wait to finally get it out there. So thanks for watching, and have a great 2014.